Welcome to uh, the first meeting of uh, R4DS book club for our packages. Uh, my name is Trevin Flickinger, and I will be uh, facilitating along this cohort and kind of guiding uh, the process as we all learn and, and read this book together. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen and then I'll go over the the shared slides for today. Um, today is going to be like a very, you know, just an introduction. Um, we're going to go into, uh, you know, what this book club's all about, um, some background, uh, a welcome. We're just getting started. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go into some background, what, what this book club is all about. Um, just briefly go over the uh, introduction to the book. Um, and we'll, we'll also um, do some introductions and introduce ourselves as well. Um, okay. So here are here's the link for the uh, current book club notes. I'll go ahead and put this in the chat. Um, so if you're not already familiar, um, our packages uh, is a book by Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan. And it they recently came out with the second edition for 2023. Um, and I'm guessing that's the link to the, oh, nice. That's uh, the link to the notes. Um, I think the link to the book is also in here. Uh, free and online as all of the books in our book club are, but uh, if you want, you can also um, purchase the physical copy as well. Um, if, if you like uh, physical books. Um, so yeah, these are the the shared slides developed by R4DS. Um, I think John said previously that the first few chapters, I'm not sure how many, the, the notes are pretty good. Um, so you can go in and edit them if you want, but um, I think those hold up pretty well, um, at least the first few chapters. Um, I'm assuming everyone here is part of the community. If not, uh, you can join at this link. Uh, and then that's the, uh, that's the better version of the link. Uh, I'll shortly go over the code of conduct, uh, what we're all about, just fostering an opening and welcoming environment. Um, we as learners, mentors, administrators pledge to make uh, participation, harassment, free experience for everyone, uh, regardless of age, body size, gender, disability, et cetera. Um, so yeah, just, you can read this if you want, but it's all about, you know, sustaining a welcoming community and, uh, and keeping that, uh, throughout all of our, uh, interactions. Okay, let me go. Uh, so I'm not sure, we'll go over this in the introductions maybe, but um, if you haven't already done a book club within R4DS, uh, we meet every week except for holidays and uh, potentially time zone conflicts. Uh, the meeting is uh, an hour in length, and the goal is to go over at least one chapter per week. Um, sometimes we can go over multiple chapters depending on uh, length. Um, sometimes we can split a chapter um, over multiple weeks as well. Um, but if we need to slow down and discuss, just let me know. Um, and then 
uh, I'm all, all about interacting. Uh, so definitely put questions in the chat, um, come off mute and ask questions. Um, if one person has a question, I'm sure other people have that same question and uh, we're all here to learn. So um, definitely feel free to ask questions and, and, uh, and participate. Um, with that being said, uh, we'll start off with some introductions, uh, if you're comfortable. Um, I'll start out. Uh, my name is Trevin Flickinger. Uh, I'm joining from Columbus, Ohio in the United States. Um, this is the first book club I've facilitated, but I did advanced R, um, Mastering Shiny and Shiny UI previously. Um, so I definitely get a lot from these book clubs. And I'm definitely looking forward to the R packages one as well. Um, I started using R in, I think around 2015, um, learning baseball stats. Um, so I think around eight years. Uh, what are you most forward, looking forward to learning? Um, I've read some of these like bits and pieces of this book already, but I think I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward into diving into the the testing bit a bit more. I uh, feel like that's gonna be really helpful. Um, so I, yeah, I'll leave this up. Um, and then if you want to uh, unmute and you're comfortable with sharing, uh, yeah, feel free to introduce yourself. Hey, hi everyone. My name is Hui. Um, I work at UC Berkeley. Um, I'm the assistant director for prospect analytics. Um, but I live in Salt Lake City actually. I'm working fully remote. Um, I have been using R for a couple of years, learning and using actually. Uh, my R experience is mostly as using R as a tool for data analysis, but um, I'm looking forward to learning more as an R programmer or software engineer. Um, yeah, um, I've never done um, a book club, I mean, an R book club before. So this is my first time, it's very excited. Awesome, welcome. Hello, I'm Angel Felix. I'm from Dominican Republic. I have been using R for two years. I work as a reporting analyst in Phoenix Double International. So basically my work is to create reports, summaries, etc. reports, uh, and create basically R pipelines. So yeah, I'm really happy to join and I'm really, happy to learn also how to uh, improve our color skills. Cool, we're, we're happy you're here. All right, I'm uh, John. Um, I uh, run R4DS and um, so uh, I'm excited to be uh, participating at least part-time and I'm hopefully full-time in this club. Um, I'm calling in from Austin, Texas. Um, I have done uh, many book clubs with r for ds including I have done this book before in a previous, like, just as they were beginning to work on the second edition. Um, and so I am partly joining because I haven't read, like, cover to cover the, the second edition. And I know that they've improved a lot of things. I've read little pieces here and there, but I want to make sure I, like, get all of it. Um, let's see, I've been using R for um, about, I think, six years. Um, and yeah, I'm most looking forward to finding those things that I don't know that I don't know. Um, that's what 
I really like about this book is they tend to be little gems just kind of hidden in it. And so uh, that's mostly what I'm here for. And uh, I want to see more book clubs and see how different groups work because so that we can improve the overall performance or, or experience. Um, yeah, so that's me. Thanks, John. Hopefully you can uh, come most yeah. weeks. Hi, hi everyone. I'm um, um, Abdul. I'm calling from um, Italy, Rome, Italy. I, uh, uh, I've participated uh, in uh, several book clubs, like I had facilitated one book club, and I think this will be the third or the fourth book club and I'm participating in. Uh, I've been using R for, the, let's say, for the past two years. And I look forward to learning a lot in this club and like get to know more about the basics, the, the fundamentals. Yeah, I work as an economist, mostly doing research on development economics stuff. So, yeah, that's it for me. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I, I actually forgot to say I... I said where I'm coming from, uh, Columbus, but I didn't say what I do. Um, I work as a data analyst for a housing and homelessness nonprofit, and I uh, build and maintain uh, shiny apps. And those are actually built as packages. So going through this book will, will definitely help me uh, in that regard. Um, yeah, so thanks, thanks everyone for sharing. Um, we'll, we'll go on. Uh, so this, this part is just to get an idea of, uh, just where you're at with Git and GitHub, uh, uh, version controlling. Uh, it's a valuable skill um, that will be discussed later in chapter 21. Um, and if you present, it's best to integrate your materials into this book down version. Um, you'll need a GitHub account and uh, the full instructions are here on the book club um, repo. So if you're not too familiar with uh, Git or GitHub. Um, this will go over how to uh, present new material. So say you um, pick a chapter to lead in discussion and you wanna include new information within the slides. Uh, this will walk you through that process on um, downloading all the materials from the repo, uh, updating it, and then installing any new um, packages or just dependencies that you used. Um, and then finally, uh, merging those changes and pushing them uh, back to the main branch, to the main repo. Um, I actually go... Um, I would say my personal comfort um, with GitHub and Git is like moderate. So I still go back to this if I uh, have to reference something. Um, so this isn't necessarily needed if you're um, leading a discussion. Uh, you can use the, the slides that are already available. Um, but this is definitely good to know. You can also, if they already exist, you can edit through the editor on GitHub. Oh. Um, since we already have slides, that is an option. Although I still recommend learning to do it this way. Um, yeah. And uh, like, even if you already know what you're doing, uh, following those instructions helps make sure that um, things aren't too confusing basically. 
And so um, it if you use use this, which is what I recommend in there, it, it takes care of making sure that you have the latest version of everything and it just avoids headaches. So um, I definitely recommend running through it at least once to kind of get the feel for how that works. And Don brings up a good point that um, the workflow that he suggests uh, use this using the use this package and dev tools. Uh, both of those packages are pretty instrumental in this book. So it's it's definitely useful to um, explore some of those functions within uh, both of those packages. Um, I'll go through these group questions just to get a feel for uh, where folks are at. Um, so feel free to type in the chat um, your your uh, comfort, how comfortable you are, or how familiar you are on like on a scale of one to five uh, with using Git for version control. One being a true beginner, uh, five use Git every day uh, can handle a merge conflict like a pro. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm somewhere in between the two, probably with Git, like even less familiar. Um, awesome. It's got some fives in here, a couple twos. Um, yeah, I think, I feel like, uh, you know, even a, even a two plus is fine with what we're doing. Um, Awesome. Uh, the next one is uh, how familiar how familiar are you with using GitHub? Uh, again, one to five scale. Um, I, yeah, I'd say I'm, I'm more familiar. So probably like, like, I don't know, maybe a four. Or I guess I have a GitHub account with repos, so maybe a five. Okay, cool. Cool. This will this will also help um, you get more familiar with uh, Git in GitHub. Um, so it's okay if you're not um, you're not out of four or five right now. Okay. Um, yeah. Go ahead and answer this. Um, if it would be valuable to uh, devote a week to. Intro and Git and GitHub, that could be something we could do. Um, but it seems like people are familiar enough with it. Uh, very valuable. Okay. Um, so maybe so. Maybe in lieu of this, the next uh, the next slide is uh, Git and GitHub resources. Um, happy Git uh, and GitHub for the user. This is a wonderful resource uh, by the author Jenny Bryan, our the uh, our packages author as well. Just going over. Um, reasons for using Git and GitHub, walking you through the steps of how to, you know, install it and register accounts, um, then connecting to R, and then um, basically going over all the um, fundamentals and also, you know, different workflows. Um, And I, I believe there are um, like guides or references for like getting unstuck as well within this book. Um, I definitely recommend you like bookmarking this if you can. Uh, it's definitely a great resource. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Definitely agree with John's comment. Thank, thank you, John. 
Um, yeah, if these, like if you see these resources and they're not enough, or if you think it'd be helpful uh, to devote some more time to this, um, yeah, we definitely would be willing to do that. Um, I'm not actually sure if I've seen these resources. So this is pretty cool um, to use this package um, like in the book club repo uh, has a lot of useful functions for um, interacting with GitHub. Uh, they make things very easy or easier than uh, they could be. And then I don't think I've ever seen actual Git uh, reference material, but this, um, oh, cool. There's there's videos and um, it's always helpful to read the source documentation as well. Um, and then Mastering Shiny, actually the uh, second cohort actually went through and uh, did did like a one week overview of um, what is Git and and using GitHub. Um, so yeah, I think I think they did a really good job of um, doing an introduction to that as well. So yeah, let let us know if. Um, that would be a good um, good time for like a smaller breakout or or anything else like that. Um, uh, but there are those Git and GitHub resources as well. Thank you. Sounds good. Awesome. Um, any um, any questions or anything like that at this time? Um, okay, cool. Um, okay, I do, so I think, sorry. Oh, I go do ahead. have a question, a quick one. Yeah. Do you recommend us to finish the, um, finish the advanced R book before joining this club? Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think I would, uh, specifically, but I think, Advanced R is a good companion book to read either during or after this book. If you want to um, uh, continue uh, continue this path, I think it's a good one to read after or during, um, but I don't think it's necessary for before. Um, John, yeah, I, I think you should you be... Have... I think you should be comfortable like writing functions in R before this book. But other than that, I don't think you need to know um, any of the advanced thing. You know, I don't think you have to have read advanced R. I think they, they both come at about the same point <laughs> in your journey. Um, mm. I'm pretty certain I read the first edition of this before advanced R. So, um, you know, th that seemed to work okay. <laughs> is Perfect. is the r for ds book does that go over um functions like is that where you would it does people um yeah 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 especially the second edition has a big section on functions but so did the first edition they had um i think enough so if you've read that or just if you've used r for a little bit and uh you know, are comfortable with the idea of writing functions. Um, but I don't, like, I think this book works on the assumption that you know what a function is. That's about it, though. Hmm. Cool. That, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I, I didn't think of, uh, I wasn't thinking of, like, what the necessary, like, prerequisites would be. Um, but that's good to know. Um, 
so for our book club, uh, for each week, we'll uh, try to have learning objectives. Um, students who study with learning objectives in mind uh, retain more. Um, so some of these are, I think, already in the meeting notes. Um, but basically, what are we going to learn today? Um, after today's session, you'll be able to dot, dot, dot. Um, uh, very roughly one per section um, and likely need to be uh, redefined. Um, so today's learning objectives, uh, this was a very short introduction, or, or I guess uh, it's not quite a chapter, so um, this will be quicker than uh, some of the other chapters, um, but we'll explain what in our packages, uh, describe why we should develop packages, and then discuss some of the philosophy behind dev tools and use this packages in uh, the development process. Um, I'm curious, uh, you can unmute or just type it in the chat if you've um, developed in a package already. Um, I don't think that's definitely not necessary. Um, for coming into this book club, but I'm, I know John has. Um, that's also one of my goals is to be able to um, work on one of my own packages uh, throughout this learning process with the right um, fundamentals and uh, package philosophy. <laughs> um, so yeah, if, if you have, that's cool. Uh, feel free to share. Um, but basically, uh, packages are very similar to what you've already been doing, um, except, uh, it's just bundled up in a different way. Um, so our packages can be defined based on their utility, a means to bundle code, data, documentation and test um, that can easily be shared with others. Um, and a package, this is what I really like about this development framework as well. Um, it opens up the use of several workflow packages and tools. Um, it just makes writing some code, uh, writing code easier. Um, our packages, can be defined by their structure. Oh, oh, awesome. Oh, thank you. Uh, we'll discuss it throughout the book club. Um, but so at its core, uh, it's kind of defined by the conventions of uh, how the files and directories are set up. Um, a package will have an R folder, a description file um, telling you what the package is, um, a test folder where um, you should include test, um, as well as a data folder um, and, and other um, folders and an organization as well. Um, yeah, so basically it's like what you've been doing except a slightly different framework. Uh so I'm I'm sure um I'm sure all, all of you are familiar with uh packages already. Um they're available via via CRAN or the Comprehensive R Archive Network. Um, I think at the time of the writing, I think they said like 18,000 packages available on CRAN. 
um, plus I'm, I'm sure more now. <laughs> um, there's also uh, packages available outside of CRAN as well. Um, GitHub is definitely the most popular. Um, there's GitLab as well, and I believe Bioconductor. Um, so these these are avenues where you can uh, share your packages um, with other folks. Um, CRAN probably being the most popular and uh, well-known uh, place for that. Um, so you might already be familiar with, uh, with how to install packages and interact with packages um, with, with these functions. Um, uh, say you wanted to install dplyr, then you would substitute that for the X and then to load that package, um, use the library function uh, so you can actually use it within your session. Um, and then the, the documentation comes in play um, when you wanna get help and, and learn more about the package. Um, so that's that will be uh, useful um, to other people when and yourself when you're building a package to uh, be able to write that documentation and and let folks and yourself um, read read the help and and uh, understand how your package works. Um, so I got into a bit of this um, uh, earlier. Uh, why do we want to develop packages? Um, you you might want to share it with with your teammates or collaborators, or or share it out in the world. Um, that is a big reason um, why you might develop a package. Um, and then you don't necessarily have to post it on CRAN. Um, posting on GitHub or somewhere else is perfectly acceptable as well. Um, it can save you time as well. Um, say you're working in a company or um, a team and there's code that you're constantly reusing. Um, I think this is similar to uh, Dave Robinson's advice with uh, functions. Like if you have something in your code where you have to copy like more than twice, write it in a function. Uh, I think this is similar for package philosophy. Um, if you're using like the same scripts or, or code multiple times throughout your workflow, wrap it in a function and uh, save some time for yourself um, or your team. Uh, one of the things I personally like is uh, some of the tools that it opens up to uh, write code better. Um, yeah, when, when I'm developing in the package environment, there's there's some cool shortcuts that you can use Oh, based on this. Oh, nice. Um, I think this is the uh, the function copying code. Uh, yeah. So this, I think this is. Yeah, like it didn't cool. highlight it, but it's uh, if you go down to a good rule of thumb, right there. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So yeah, Hadley said. That if you've written the same code, if you've copy and pasted code um, more than twice, you should write a function. And then David Robinson extended that that you know if you've copy and pasted a 
function more than twice, then you should write a package. Oh, wait. I think maybe Dave said a uh, blog post or... Oh, yeah. A anyway, <laughs> people have, have expanded yeah. this in many ways. <laughs> I'm uh, getting my yeah. uh, my like <laughs> sayings mixed up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can I go back? Um, yeah, so it, it makes the whole process more efficient. Um, it defines a formal organizational structure. Uh, I guess, could you say it's like opinionated or does it have to be that way? Um, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. I was muted for that next bullet. The formal structure um, is opinionated. Like there are rules on how you can put things together. And then obviously this book has opinions um, about uh, specifically what should be included. Yeah, I, I definitely um, don't think I have anything wrong with uh, the way that they organize their packages. So I, I don't think I'm going to veer too far off uh, the way they organize. Um, so yeah, definitely a good way to keep things uh, in a row and and organized. Um, allows us to develop more robust, rigorous, and reproducible analysis. Um, and it helps us write uh, better code as well. Um, Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that um, while reading Mastering Shiny was the concept of uh, modularity, having like a specific um, modules or, or R files for certain things. And I think this is kind of a similar concept where um, we might have multiple R files within our package uh, devoted to um, different functions or areas and that helps us write more organized code and uh, uh, keeps us um, from writing one long uh, R script. Um, yeah, cur just curious, uh, feel free to put this in the comments. Um, uh, but I, like, I'm curious if you have a package in mind that you want to develop during the cohort or, um, maybe, um, maybe you want to bring a package to work and uh, you, you already have an idea for that. Um, yeah, feel free to put that in the comments if you already have ideas. Yeah, I started developing a package for categorical variable correlations. Uh, it's bringing one from Python and basically I want to complete more function and maybe to improve the test. Oh, very cool. Um, I, um, so my predecessor developed our package, which is being used by my team at Berkeley and, um, so um, I'm trying to fix some of the things that is mm -hmm. currently not working. Yeah, but I have never developed like um, a, a package myself, except for um, like an empty package following the YouTube instructions on how to like build a package, but nothing inside. It's basically like empty, it doesn't do mm -hmm. anything. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that... Uh... I think I was in a similar boat because my package experience was 
coming to um, packages that were already developed. So I had to figure out what the code was doing versus building everything from scratch. It's, yeah. it's having a different um, uh, framework and, and getting to understand what it's doing versus uh, building everything. Same here. Cool. Well, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully we can kind of see, um, hopefully this will inform some of, uh, some of that. So, uh, we can build off of, uh, each framework. Well, cool. thank you all. Um, philosophy behind the tools of our package development, um, I think this goes back to the uh, R4DS quote that I uh, that John had just shared. Um, anything that can be automated uh, should be automated. Um, so we'll see that uh, in the coming chapters, from like uh, building the package to uh, running tests. Um, uh, a lot of things within this package development process um, can be automated and make that process a lot easier. Um, we'll use functions uh, to avoid doing it by hand. Um, the, the dev tools and use this package are there. I can't give those enough praise. Um, <laughs> Uh, they they help out with the package development um, so much, um, so you're not going in and, and writing everything by hand. Those these really simplify that process. Um, so to do that, we'll we'll learn uh, a bit about these packages and and going to um, what functions that they offer and and how to use those functions. Um, our thinking should be on what we want the package to do, not on how to organize a package. Um, so yeah, that both of these tools allow you to focus on what you want the package to do versus, um, worrying about how it's organized or all the other like lower level details of building a package. Um, so yeah, it, these are great. Um, uh, dev tools works nicely within our studio. Uh, so that's the development environment we'll use. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if, uh, anyone else uses, um, an environment other than our studio. Um, like I don't know, I don't know if VS Code plays as nicely with Dev Tools, um, so definitely suggest using our Studio um, if you don't already. Okay, what if we need more detail? Um, the official manual is writing our extensions, and the document is exhaustive. Um, okay. Uh, is that the link? Oh, awesome. Yeah. I updated the link. <laughs> uh, they went through and did all of the like official R manuals in Cordo and they're just like cleaner and easier to read. So, oh, um, I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Thank you for, uh, thank you for linking that. Um, just a general, um, just generally looking over it, it looks like we'll be going over a lot of these, uh, or, or a lot of this, um, but maybe not necessarily all of it. Um, uh, 
you can definitely get overwhelmed by looking how much info is in there. Uh, but I think just going through this book will be um, very useful in and of itself. Uh, yeah, it's definitely exhaustive. Um, uh, so finishing up just some topics that we won't learn, um, uh, Git and GitHub are not covered in this book, but the resources that were linked um, previously are uh, really good and thorough. Um, we won't go over um, compiled code. Um, and I'm not even, I'm not even sure uh, what that is. I'm, I might have an idea, but. Um, That's referencing like uh, C or C++ code or Rust or, you know, lots of other options where we will talk very briefly about where that would go if you want to use it in a package, but they don't go into oh. like how to work with RCPP and all that. Um, so, you know, that's, it's also barely covered in advanced R. It's like extremely yeah. advanced R or yeah. it's going beyond R. So um, this book doesn't really talk about it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I haven't had the need to um, use that yet. Um, I think I took a semester or an online course that used C code, and I'm I'm glad that I code mainly in R. Um, oh, and then uh, Markdown and R Markdown, and um, and I suppose Cordo are also not covered. Um, but there is a lot of great stuff within this book. Um, uh, that being said, uh, there is a lot of material in this book. Um, I think maybe over 20 chapters, 23, it looks like. Um, and even the, uh, extended resources as well. There's there's a lot of stuff that we can cover and go over, um, but don't get overwhelmed. Uh, some of the stuff you might not even use. Um, and at its core in our package is just in our directory. Um, so you've definitely been, uh, you're set up to, um, transition to our package development very easily. Um, and you're not expected to know everything uh, we're all learning here. Um, none of us is as smart as all of us. Um, it's okay to say, I don't know. I definitely did that in my other cohorts as well. Um, and we can stop at any time to uh, discuss or or raise questions. Um, this this isn't my book club or or John's or this is our book club. So we're all here to learn. Um, yeah, so definitely use this as as that learning environment so we can bounce ideas off each other and learn and grow together. Um, I think, oh, there's, there's, we are co cohort six. Okay. So there's, uh, five previous cohorts and, uh, the videos have all been recorded. Um, so you can go back and watch, um, other cohorts go over, um, the week's package. Um, if you're presenting, uh, that's definitely useful to go back and, and see what they discussed. If, um, if that's something that you want. Um, and I think before we wrap up here, um, I do want to, oh, perfect. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, there is a link 
that some of you have already seen and have gotten there already uh, in our channel at the top, uh, volunteer to present. It's a uh, Google Sheet. Um, so yeah, go ahead and feel free to volunteer. Um, I find uh, presenting a chapter is one of the best ways to learn it um, because you have to be able to uh, at least have a basic understanding to uh, teach other folks in the cohort. Um, so yeah, thank you for the folks that have already signed up to volunteer. Um, if if we don't get like any volunteers for a given week, um, I'll, as uh, the facilitator, I'll be the one to present those chapters. Um, but it's definitely good if we have multiple um, weeks with, with volunteers already signed up. Um, so I, I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, the, the first chapter, the whole game actually goes through um, basically the entire like um, package development process from start to finish. Um, I think this is a new chapter for the second edition. Um, it's I'm, like, I haven't read this whole book, but it's definitely uh, a great chapter. So I'm looking forward to um, the first week. Awesome. Cool. Well, if, uh, yeah, if you want to sign up for any other weeks, go ahead. Um, but it looks like we are um, good for now, at least. Um, so thank you for uh, for volunteering. Uh, looks like we have just a few minutes left. Um, I guess I, I'll open it up to um, any questions or or just any comments. Um, what folks are looking forward to or anything like that. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Um, I have a question about the sign up sheet. It says slides available. Um, what does that mean? So that is, uh, it autom It defaults to no. And um, I'll probably just go through at the end of this meeting and check. It should be yes for almost all of them. Um, and I think I think at this point it's yes for literally all of them, but I, I'll have to check to make sure. There are a couple of chapters that were kind of being written as the cohort five was um, going, was reading them or they were being revised. So it's possible there are chapters that don't have um, existing slides, but I don't think there are any anymore. So presenting, you know, at a minimum, you can just use what's already there. I do recommend editing them because you get the practice with GitHub and, you know, it's unlikely that they're perfect. <laughs> and so if each time we uh, make them a little bit better, that's kind of the goal. Um, but yeah, so that's a, right now the spreadsheet is lying. Um, we just need to go through and check and see what, what is there. Okay, thank you. And I did wanna say, um, I had forgotten the other link that is in our Slack channel is a spreadsheet to, um, as we go through the book, log any questions we have for um, Jenny and or Hadley. I haven't spoken to them yet, but they are usually pretty good about at like towards the end of the club, we'll get them in to do a Q and A. Um, so if you have questions as you go, uh, it's good to log them. We'll also like call for questions before they come in and we can just ask questions live when they're here um like i say i don't know for sure but probably uh they've been really good in the past about uh they've they've it's not just that they've been good about it they really enjoy it and so i think it's really likely that we'll be able to get them in 
Um, more so like while they were actively writing it because they could uh, learn things to fix. But even now, um, this is Jenny's first book. And so I'm sure she'll uh, want to hear what we think now that it's done. Um, they also did, or I guess Hadley did Jenny's talk for her at yes. Cosmic Conf. Um, you're already here, but I think it was basically like um, a pitch for the second version of our packages. Um, so even if you're, even though you're already here, I'd definitely recommend that. Yeah, I don't think they're available if you weren't at uh, the conference yet, but when that one becomes available, it's very funny because um, Jenny got COVID and so at the last minute she couldn't do her talk, but she could edit her slides. And so she set up the slides for Hadley to present without ever having seen the slides. And she like put jokes in just for while he was presenting. So it was a really fun presentation and it tells a lot about like the philosophy of the book and all that. Um, so yeah, that will, hopefully that'll be available before too long. We'll uh, throw a link in. Um, and then one last bookkeeping thing before we go for me is you'll see at the start of the meeting, I said start mm -hmm. in the chat. And when we wrap up, um, I will see say end. That is so that the these videos get post or these meetings get posted to YouTube so that people can catch up if they miss a, a week. And if we remember to put start and end in the chat, the videos uh, automatically get edited and trim off the beginning and end, and it makes my life easier. So if everyone can remember that, um, that should do a pretty good job. My, and I have officially found if you say start and then, you know, we talk about some stuff that's not really relevant and we say start again, it does trim off that extra piece. So mm -hmm. um we can use it if we ever want to like kind of reset. Oh, I accidentally talked about something that I don't really want to go up on YouTube or, you know, that kind of thing. We can use that to trim that off. And I think it's the same. Um, I think if we say end, I can't remember if we say end a second time, I think it keeps the piece in between um, because that's kind of a way of saying, oh, oops, we talked about some more. Uh, so maybe don't trim at the first point. Um, and also, if you're ever like if you're presenting and you realize uh, we've had this a couple of times that like while you were while other people were discussing something, maybe the presenter flipped over to their email to uh, read something and then realized, oh, oh, crap, it's being recorded. Uh, mm -hmm. Just let me know. And, um, you know, hopefully that won't happen. But if it does, I can trim that out. Uh, we've had a couple instances where someone wants to take care of that kind of thing. Um, and it's not too awful <laughs> to go in there and edit it or throw a black box on or that kind of thing. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. I, I forgot <laughs> about the, I guess I can type it now. Yeah. It makes my life easier. So I, I remember to tell people. 